Today on Wrist Beards and Gear, I uh, I start installing a new studio desk. So back in 2016, I got my first proper studio desk, this Argosy Halo console that I have been at ever since. Now, what I was on before was a drafting table that I got from Boeing Surplus for $20 in 1998, I think it was. Um, this Argosy Halo desk has been very functional and I have learned a lot about what works for me both ergonomically and practically within the context of my very small compact room. Now, there are a few things that drive me insane about this desk. However, all of that is going to change with the installation of a Danger Fox Genesis 16U split bay desk, which has just arrived and I gotta tear all this out. Oh boy. Now, when you're installing a new studio desk, this pretty much means I have to start over completely with everything. I have to rip all of this stuff out, all the wiring, speakers, lights, uh, power, uh, everything has to come out. I have to clean everything up. I have to construct the new desk, put it in. Now I gotta wire everything back up, <laughs> which is fun. Also stressful, which because means obviously I can't do anything while I have everything down, but we are going to start that journey right now. All right, so after I would say about three days total, the desk is complete and everything is wired in and set up and routed and I have everything how I've basically always wanted this. This is, I don't know, this is the, this is the pinnacle for me. Um, the one thing that is gonna change is this Elgato light is going to go and I have a non-light coming, a much, much larger um, LED light for my uh, desk videos. Um, but other than that, this is the setup. And on the right bank, I went with the Antelope Audio interface, the um, SSL bus plus and the Rupert Neve master bus processor. And then I have a dangerous converters and then, uh, the monitor controller that the controller is right there for. Um, the reason why I set it up like this on the right side is because there's already a lot going on on the back side of the interface with all of the routing and cables coming in. And my old setup had a bunch of single rack unit compressors and just added to the congestion of everything that was going on if you had to get back there. So I just chose to put two of the largest units on this side to help reduce the amount of wiring hooking up into the interface, if that makes sense. Um, this Bus Plus from SSL is incredible. I love that it has a sleep mode as well. So if I wanted to, to put it into sleep mode, I could do that. Uh, the Rupert Neve is amazing. Uh, that's my go-to. Um, and then on the top, now this radial DI is actually sitting on what is a uh, monitor stand. 
that the desk comes with, that the, the Genesis comes with, I actually just repurposed it and used it as a shelf, uh, which is, which it's perfectly suited for. Um, I have my radial HDI DI and then my reamp box all in one place. And we'll get to where this DI goes in a second. I have my Neumann KH80 monitors and my KH120 monitors. My 120 monitors are hooked up to my KH120 sub. And it's very clean back here. It's just, it's basically just a single loom for the XLR cables going into the sub, which has the DSP and the room correction. And then they go to the 120. So the, the, the KH80s do not, are not routed through the sub, but the KH120s are, okay? This way I can just get, you know, there's, they're different sounding and one is super massive, huge, tons of low end, big picture stuff. And then the KH80 is, you know, watching YouTube videos, non, non critical listening, I guess. Um, next we have my camera mount, which because I have all this room now, I can just cleanly mount on the back behind my monitor. I have the dangerous monitor controller and I have an Elgato stream deck that I use for video editing and, you know, working in Logic and Premiere and all that kind of stuff. And you can kind of see around the back that it's just, it's just very, very clean. Now I love that the crossover or the main support is also a pass through for all of the cables. So all of the cables are just nice and neatly kind of wrapped up. And it's just, it's just very, very tidy. On the floor, I used to have a bunch of stuff here and that is all gone. I have a single power unit or a UPS going to the wall. And that's, that's literally it. Um, on the left side of the Genesis, we have the Heritage HA73, which is a Neve 1073 clone. We have the Heritage Successor bus comp. We have the API 2500 plus bus comp. And then we have the Alicia Expressor bus comp. And then we have an actual Neve 1073 DPX dual channel mic preamp. Now, the reason why I put everything like this is because my SM7 microphone comes directly into the heritage. Now I put everything how I wanted it sequentially to go. So my inputs going into my interface is one, two, three, four, five, six, cause these are stereo, seven, eight, nine, ten. Before over the years, what had happened was after changing out several pieces of, of gear, my input one and two would be here. And then my three, four would be over there. And then my five, six would be over here. I got tired of all of that. So this way I don't have to remember what the inputs are at all. It's very, very clean. And then for processing, I have now gone to the quad cortex from neural DSP because I now have the desk room to do so. I couldn't really do this functionally before with the Argosy Halo. I just didn't have enough room or extra room to put this and still be comfortable sitting here. Um, and I'm going into the line in uh, for the Neve 1073. Um, this way I can use the Kemper, I can use the Quad Cortex, I can use the Helix, I can use whatever I need to and have it right here and piped into my setup right here. It's very, very simple. Now, the DI, the radial DI right here on the back has a direct out, but also has a processed quarter inch out that is coming from the back side of the desk into the quad cortex. This just keeps everything nice and tidy and clean. And uh, that is basically, that is basically the setup. 
This is an incredibly comfortable setup and this is much more this is much more stable, I guess is what you would, would call it. I don't know, it's, it's much more robust feeling. There's less wobble, there's less movement when you lean on it. Um, there's still room on the side to get to the guitars. And I can still walk back here if I want. And uh, yeah. This has been an incredible build, much, much easier than I thought it would be if I'm totally honest. It's very, very cool. Okay, so at this point, I have had this desk for almost a week and I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, at first, it was a little weird with the um, monitors further back than they were on the Argosy. With the Argosy, it was very, very vertical and the, the rack banks um, were very, very vertical and you really felt like you were really close to a wall of gear and speakers. Um, this mastering style Genesis split bay is, I don't know, it's a, it's a different vibe. So the speaker's a little further back. Um, it sounds a little bit better in here. And although the desk is physically taking up more space than the Argosy, somehow, as my, my girlfriend noted, that it makes the room feel bigger because there's less vertically visually when you walk into the studio now it's much lower and sleeker and there's just all this real estate that i have never had before and it is it's amazing <laughs> i really really like it um i've gotten all the kinks worked out and i am back into work mode and it is an absolute joy to sit here and work at this desk every single day it really puts me in a specific mindset and also in the event that I do have to get around the desk I don't have to worry about the odd piece of rat gear uh, giving me another scar on my knee or something like that like I did with the Argosy so take that for what you will um, the coolest thing about this desk is if I do want to reduce its uh, physical footprint at any point there are three different center sections for the Genesis split bay. And there's a 30 inch, 36 inch, and a 42 inch. And this is a 36 inch. However, I can reduce or increase the width without touching the banks of rat gear. I could leave, theoretically, I could leave the gear and everything how they are right now. And I could just change out the center section with three different pieces and put the wider or narrower part in and I would be good to go. Much like your grandmother's table when it was Thanksgiving time when you spread it open and add a, add a, add a pane. Kind of like that, kind of not really. But um, this is very, very convenient and this makes this just, it makes it very customizable. And I like that about this desk. Special shout out to Chris Justice and Aaron over at Danger Fox. Um, they have made this video possible by allowing me to kind of tell them what I really wanted in a desk. And um, they've just been amazing through this whole process. And uh, you guys will be seeing this desk literally pretty much every single video that I make on this channel. And uh, yeah, I will link down below in the description for all things Danger Fox. And uh, with that, I'm gonna get out of here. You've been wonderful, I've been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.